So incredibly excited for this week's guest on the Mans Hakim podcast. Please welcome Jim Quick. Uh, so good to be here. Such a pleasure to have you, Jim. Now, Jim, for anyone who's not really familiar with much of your work, can you please give me a brief description on what you do? Yeah, what does a brain coach do? Yes. <laughs> well, you know how in, people, individuals have uh, personal trainers? Mm -hmm. And what do they do? They make your body uh, more muscular, stronger, faster, more flexible, pliable, give it more energy. And, well, I want your mental muscles uh, to be stronger. I want your yes. memory to be sharper. I want mm -hmm. your focus uh, to, be, to be sharper and, and have more energized. And so I help people to, to build their mental muscles, if you will, so that they could uh, catch up, keep up, get ahead, so they can learn faster, yeah. uh, so they can optimize uh, their brain. I believe we live in the millennium of the mind. Some of your listeners might struggle with distraction or forgetfulness or burnout or overload. Mm -hmm. And so I show people how to uh, build better, brighter brains. I love that. Yeah. Um, and what are some of the best foods we should be having for our brain to improve yeah. brain health? So what you eat matters, especially for your gray matter. Uh, literally what you eat becomes you. There's a whole area of science I write about in Limitless called uh, a neuronutrition, that there's certain foods that are very neuroprotective. And everyone's different, right? Their biology is different. So okay. I would say, you know, talk to your nutritionist or healthcare provider. Uh, generally, things like avocados are good for the brain. Mm -hmm. The monounsaturated fat, your brain is mostly fat. Uh, blueberries are great, great snack. I, I like yeah. to call them brain berries. Yeah. <laughs> um, some people like broccoli is uh -huh. good. Olive oil has been shown to be good for the brain. Right. If your diet allows eggs, the choline in eggs is good for cognitive health. Okay. Uh, green leafy vegetables like uh, kale and spinach. Mm -hmm. um, I would say wild salmon or sardines. Uh, the omega-3s are very, very important. Uh, turmeric is, is wonderful for the brain. I'll put turmeric with um, some almond milk, maybe a little bit of honey, make a little golden milk. Yes, love that. Uh, yeah, walnuts, uh, dark chocolate, probably my favorite. Right. Yeah. And, and what about food, other foods like sugar or normal milk chocolate? Yeah. Does it actually deteriorate your brain or the use of your brain? It does. Again, what you eat matters, especially for your gray matter. Probably one of the worst foods is, is sugar, excess sugar. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, for, for the brain, um, also uh, fried foods, processed foods, you know, and so everything is a choice, right? You could ask yourself, is this good for my brain or is this bad for my brain? Is what I'm feeding my body or feeding my mind, watching this show, who I'm spending time with, this hobby or activity, is, is it good for my brain or bad for my brain? Not we have to be so obsessive about it, but our brain, I always like point to my brain in photographs, sometimes I wear brain shirts, just to remind people to take care of what takes care of us, mm -hmm. right? You see what you see in your awareness, you take care of. You see your hair, your car, your, your clothing, your skin, you tend to take care of it because it's there. But we don't see the thing that takes care of us, which is, which is our brain, you know? And we have these 87 billion neurons that are the most incredible supercomputer between our ears that controls everything. And, you know, it's uh, use it or lose it. And our brain doesn't come with an owner's manual and it's not always user friendly. And that's why, you know, we created our podcast and our books and things like that. And so can you improve the brain that this, this might be a silly question, yeah. but can you improve the brain that you're born with if you eat the right foods and look after yourself or yeah. is what you have you know, is what your is it nature versus nurture? Yeah. So things aren't fixed. We've learned more about the human brain more in the past ten years than the previous okay. thousand years combined. Mm -hmm. And we found as we're grossly underestimating our own capabilities, that after all our, all your listeners right now, regardless of the age, their background, their career, their education level, their financial situation, gender, history, IQ, we all can improve. We can grow older, but in some ways we could grow better. And part of it certainly is the food we eat. That's part of it, but also it's the thoughts that we have. It's the mm -hmm. amount of exercise, it's the supplementation, it's our peer group, because who we spend time with is who we become. Some people are energy vampires, which are not necessarily good for our brains. Uh, clean environment is also very good for, you know, for our brain. Clean, clean water, clean air. Uh, even when you make your bed or you clean your laptop, a clean, you know, uh, your external world reflects your internal world. Uh, things like protecting your brain, wearing, wearing a helmet or avoiding, mm. you know, extreme sports for your kids. Um, sleep, so very important. You know, if you don't get a good night's sleep, how are you, how's your focus, how's your memory, you know? How's your I, I wanna talk about sleep. Um, what is the optimum amount of sleep and how important is sleep for the brain? Yeah, so sleep is, is very important. Uh, the numbers vary in terms of what's, it's individual, for, mm -hmm. you know, for, for per person. Um, what's more important than the quantity of sleep is the quality of sleep. 
The deep sleep is uh, when we're recovering our body. Our REM sleep is when our, our minds are recovering also as well. Um, I would say when it comes to sleep, it's important for your brain for a number of reasons. Number one, it's where you clean out beta amyloid plaque uh, that leads to brain aging challenges. So when you sleep, the sewage system in your brain kicks in and it uh, cleans out uh, things that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. um, it also, it's where you consolidate short to long-term memory. So if someone has long-term memory issues, they might want to check their sleep or mm -hmm. do a sleep study. Okay. And also it's where you dream. Well, we probably spend 20 years of our life sleeping, maybe three to five full years dreaming. Wow. And um, But if you're not getting good sleep, you're not dreaming, and why is it important? First of all, it's good for your recovery for your brain. But also, did you know some of the most incredible things in culture uh, the origin was in people's dreams. Yeah. You know, like literature and art and music. Paul and, and Sufism as mm -hmm. well, you know. Yes. And so things like uh, Paul McCartney created the song Yesterday in His Dream. Mm -hmm. Mary Shelley created um, Frankenstein in her yes. dream. Mm -hmm. You know, Elias Howe created the sewing machine in his, in his dream. But it requires that, you know, we teach people how to remember their dreams. But it requires first that you get restful sleep. So sleep is, is very important. Um, yet so many people, they don't prioritize their sleep. And there's certain things that people could do to, uh, to remedy bad sleep. I've tried to lucid dream. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know if I did it right or if there's a right way, but I tried it and uh, I don't think it was a very comfortable experience. Yeah. So lucid dream for, for your listeners is when, if you've ever had a dream and you're aware that you're dreaming. And one of the benefits is you could start to direct your dream and maybe you know meet that person or have that conversation or create things you know, directed. Mm -hmm. And uh, but there is a process for certainly doing that. Uh, I'm not sure what you know tools or techniques that you, you tried. <laughs> Obviously, it didn't go very well. Right, so. right. <laughs> um, how important is the morning and evening routine for your brain? I believe first you create your habits and then your habits create you. You create your habits of meditation or reading each day or exercising and those or eating good foods and those habits create you back. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you have to win the day, you have to win that first hour of the day, certainly. You know, and how you start your day is how you, you know, it sets momentum for the rest. Uh, my morning routine is all about getting my brain right. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, I know, uh, you know, Oprah has her morning routine and, you know, I'm, I'm sure Dave Asprey has his. Mine is all just getting my I'm starting my brain. So some things that I will include, uh, I'll wake up and I'll remember my dreams. Uh, people could, if they search Jim Quick, uh, how to remember your dreams, there are plenty of videos on how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I also plan out my day. I do this thought experiment, which I encourage everyone to try. I, I imagine myself coming back at the end of the day, coming back home, and maybe a friend or family member asked me how my day was. And I said, it was amazing. Today was an incredible day. Wow. And then I asked myself, what had to happen in order for me to feel that way? And then I write down in my mind like three things personally and three things professionally. I don't think we ever get through our hundred to-do list, mm -hmm. but I think the most important thing is to create, is to the most important thing is to make the most important thing the most important things. Yes. And it's really about not time management, pro priority management. So I focus on three wins for work, three wins for personal, and they don't have to be huge, but that's mm -hmm. what I focus on the day. That's just my mind right. Um, I'll drink water first thing in the morning. It's very simple, but being dehydrated, we can lose so much water through respiration and perspiration while we sleep. Yeah. And just staying hydrated will boost our reaction time and our thinking speed. Um, I will go outside first thing in the morning. Even if it's cloudy outside and the sun's not shining, I get grounded. Uh, my feet on the, on, on the ground, yeah. uh, that's, I think that's important. I get fresh air. Uh, I'll also get some sunlight, which is important for resetting your circadian rhythm. Yes. And that's very important. So I can try to get 20 minutes outside and maybe some movement. Um, they say there's a study done at Appalachian State University saying for deeper sleep um, and weight management, when's the best time to exercise, morning, afternoon, or evening? Yeah. And they tested people at 7 a.m., uh, 1 p.m., and then 7 p.m., and they found them at 7 a.m. It was the best uh, time. Yeah, for, for, for most people that they got uh, significantly better, deeper sleep. And it doesn't have to be your full workout. I mean, mm -hmm. even if you just did five minutes of jump roping or calisthenics, you get your heart rate, your metabolism going first thing in the morning. You could do your, you know, your big workout later in the day. Mm -hmm. But um, those are some of the things I do. I would challenge everyone also, this is something that gets spread out a lot. I, I challenge people to brush their teeth with their opposite hand. Oh, yeah. And it's a challenge oh. because number one, it, it activates a different part of your brain. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. Uh, number two, it, it forces you to focus. Because most people, what are they doing? They're getting on their phones. And when you get on your phone first thing in the morning, I think it's good to have a to-do list. But 
successful people, I noticed a lot of them have a not to do list. And on the top of your not to do list, in my opinion, would be not touching their phone the first That's 30 minutes point. of the day. Yeah. When you wake up, you're relaxed, you're, you're, you're very suggestible. Mm -hmm. um, and if the first thing you do is grab your phone, you're rewiring your brain to be distracted. Yeah. For every ring, ping, ding, app notification, social media alerts driving you to distraction, you wonder why you can't focus later in the day. And also you're rewiring your brain to be reactive, mm -hmm. meaning you could check your phone first thing. Um, and I know some of us have to do that, but if, it's if it, you can avoid it, one social media message or one text message or voicemail message, email could hijack your whole day. Yeah, you know, and, and throw and, you off. Yeah. Exactly, as opposed to starting your day with intention and saying, these are my three goals today. And you know, coming from a more creator standpoint, as opposed to reacting and fighting fires first thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I um, the first thing I do in the morning is go outside and get some sun to set my circadian yeah, rhythm. That's so good for you. And I think we're very lucky in Dubai that it's always sunny. So, this is true. You know, it's even just 10, 15 minutes because um, Andrew Huberman always says that as well that you mm -hmm. must go outside first few minutes. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's incorporating the elements. I think about the. The, the elements, you know, in ancient times, they would say fire and water and air and earth. Mm -hmm. How do you, and then those don't cost anything. So how can you incorporate those four things in the morning and in the evening? So, you know, the earth, touch the earth, you know, get grounded. Uh, you know, the air, do some uh, deep breathing or box breathing or alpha breathing or Wim Hof breathing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, water, I mentioned hydration, is so important to replenish. Um, and then also the sun, you know, is the fire. And so you could do that and then you could also do things like that you know, at night, at mm -hmm. nighttime routine. You can incorporate the four elements, which back in ancient times, they thought everything was made of those four elements. Um, and, you know, elemental, there's the word mental, and I think it's important. So like fire at night is, um, is, is like some people use red light at night, yeah. you know, um, because it, it matches, like, you know, it's time to go to sleep because you produce melatonin. But, you know, in hunter gatherer, you know, it was a drop in two things, drop in light and drop in temperature. Mm -hmm. But in modern era, we don't have that because we have maybe central temperature or um, lighting and everything. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, people on their phones, on their screens, it mimics like the daylight and it tricks our mind into thinking, wow, it's still daytime. It's daytime and yeah. we don't create the melatonin to, sh to show that it's um, to help you to relax. Mm -hmm. um, also temperature control. So if you could drop the temperature, we tend to sleep better in, in more cold environment. Not where it's so cold, it's distracting yeah. uh, where you're shivering. Um, but that also helps also. So one of the things you could do is, you know, use the red light. Um, that definitely helps. Uh, taking, talking about um, heat, uh, red, uh, fire and water, you could take a, a nice warm bath, mm -hmm. right? And then when you get out, the core body temperature drops and that's your body's changing your nervous system to say, hey, it's to create that melatonin to relax again. Mm -hmm. um, you do some, um, uh, some yoga breathing, uh, uh, yoga nidra, like to be able to, uh, to help you to relax and phase into that parasympathetic rest and digest. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, there's your air. And uh, so I'm, I'm, very, I'm very fascinated with people's routines. Yes. You know, and I'm, I'm curious also, everyone who's listening, maybe even take a screenshot of where you're consuming this you know, and tag us both and yes. post like, what's, what's your morning routine and share mm -hmm. it? Or what, what, do you, what are your non-negotiables at night? Mm -hmm. you know, that would be so we can learn together. Absolutely. Um, in Dubai, it's interesting because it's such a culture of uh, sleeping quite late. I think because yeah. everything stays awake, he, uh, open so late. Yeah. People are out shopping at like midnight or one o'clock in the yeah. morning. So I think the routine here is slightly different to the rest of the world. Yeah, I've been coming here, you know, regularly for years. So, yes. uh, um, you know, it, part of it is our choices. I have a quote in Limitless. Uh, from a French philosopher, it says, life is the C between the letters B and D. Life is C between B and D. B stands for birth, D stands for death. Life in between, choice. That's what C mm. stands for. Wow. That we are the sum total of all the choices we've made up to this point. Yes. Who are we gonna spend time with? Where, what are we gonna do for a living? Um, you know, what, do, what are we gonna eat or feed our minds, all those things. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that these difficult times, they could diminish us. These difficult times, they could distract us. Yeah. Or these difficult times, they could develop us. Mm -hmm. Right, we decide, we always have choices. And so, um, you know, and nobody's perfect. And I, I certainly don't, don't watch the perfect things or, or eat the perfect things all the time. Mm -hmm. But the goal is not perfection, the goal is progress. Yes. Yeah. So if somebody has to do a presentation or they sent an email or they're studying for an exam, what's yeah. the best way to remember what you read? 
So yeah, I think everybody feels like they're absent-minded nowadays. They're, if they are overloaded, they're a little burnt out, and they can't keep their mind straight. You know, maybe they lose things. They misplace their phone or their 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 car keys or their car. They forget where they parked the car that day. Or <laughs> All the time like in Dubai Mall. <laughs> right, exactly. They're using their car alarm like GPS, trying to figure out where they parked their car that day, and then they realize they took Uber or something like that, and they have these lapses. They forget people's names or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say there's no such thing as a good or bad memory. There's a train memory and an untrained memory. Unfor unfortunately, we're not taught in school. Like if people see me live on stage and I can be on three continents like I am this week in one week, right? I'm in front of a good quarter million people every year in, you know, in total. And I'll do, sometimes do these demonstrations while I'll memorize 100 people's names uh, or an audience will challenge me to memorize 100 random words or 100 digit number. And I would call them often forwards and backwards. And I always tell people I don't do this to impress you. I do this to express to you what's possible, because we could all do that, but we just weren't taught. Like, mm -hmm. there was no class in school called memory. Yeah. Right, they, they teach reading, writing, arithmetic, but what about retention? You know, Socrates says learning is remembering. So I would first start that there's no such thing as a good or bad memory, there's trained memory and an untrained memory. Mm -hmm. um, we just weren't taught those, those methods, right? So that's why I wanna bring more to the world. I would say when it comes to reading, it's interesting because people often read a page in a book, get to the end, and just forget what they just read. Yeah. And they go back and reread it, and they still don't know what they just read. So a few things, I'll give you two things that would help dramatically. First, using a visual pacer while you read. Um, I put a link in uh, my Instagram for your, your listeners uh, for a free uh, masterclass on speed reading. Mm -hmm. And they can go through and they'll learn how to double their reading speed. But one of the techniques is reading using underlining the words with a pen or a highlighter or a mouse on a computer or your finger. Okay. And just by using it as a visual pacer will boost your reading speed 25 to 50% you know, because it helps you to focus, right? And so your eyes are attracted to motion, so you tend to follow it there. And because you have better focus, you have better retention and understanding. Okay. The other thing I would say is a lot of people don't remember what they read because they don't have any questions. I find that questions in life are the answer. That when the brain primarily tries to delete information, because otherwise if we let everything in, we would be overwhelmed and overloaded. Mm -hmm. So what do we let in? There's part of our brain called the reticular activating system, mm -hmm. RAS, which people don't need to know, but that determines what's important. So for example, years ago, my, my sister, this is like 20 plus years ago, would send me pictures uh, of uh, and postcards of a specific kind of breed of dog. It was a pug dog. And, um, and, I, and I was like, why is she sending me this, these photos? And then all of a sudden I realized her birthday was coming up, right? Uh -huh. And she's a good marketer and she's like planting those seeds. <laughs> but I started, funny thing happened was I started seeing pug dogs everywhere in my neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. I would go to the supermarket and someone's carrying a pug dog at the register. I'd be walk, running in my neighborhood and somebody's walking six pug dogs. And my question for everyone listening is, did those dogs, that breed of dog, just magically appear you know, in my neighborhood? No, they were always there, but I, I was deleting them. I wasn't paying attention because it was important because I wasn't asking questions. And when I say, when you ask questions, you get answers. Most people, when they're reading, they don't have questions. Mm -hmm. You know, like questions when I'm reading like a nonfiction book, like for some of your guests, um, whether it's Dave or Robin or, or others, um, Marissa, like I, I ask myself, you know, how can I use this? When will I use this? Why must I do this? How does this relate to what I already know? How do I teach this to somebody else, mm -hmm. right? And because I have those questions, I like, oh, there's a, there's a pug dog, there's a pug dog, there's an answer, there's an answer, there's an answer. So I would say if you want greater speed, use your finger while you read. Okay. If you want better comprehension, ask more questions and you'll get more answers. Interesting. So what about with names? So in How to Win Friends and Influence People, they say you should always remember somebody's name and right. refer to them. What if you forget? I mean, we go to a lot of events in Dubai. Oh, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I forget people's names, yeah. even though I've seen them so many times, but because it's you know, spread out yeah. over such a long time. Yeah, people either have short-term issue where yes. they, the handshake breaks and the name just disappears out of your mind, you yes. just heard it, or it's a long-term issue. You're at an event and somebody taps you on your shoulder, you, you, turn, you see someone you recognize, yeah. but for life, you, you don't remember who or where you, you know that person from. Yeah. What makes it worse is when that person has the audacity to remember your name. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> Or you're talking to somebody whose name you should know and somebody comes up and you have to introduce, introduce these two people and it gets yeah, awkward. Yeah. Um, well, they say a name is the sweetest sound to a person's ears, right? Um, and how are you gonna show somebody you're gonna care? Like I believe remembering people's names is one of the most important things you could do in business. Because yes. how are you gonna show somebody you're gonna care for their future, their finances, their, their family, their wellness, whatever you have to sell them if you don't care enough just to remember 
their, the their name. name, right? Yeah. So name is, is very important. Um, a few things that I, I would recommend. I, I would always recommend uh, the suave technique. I put this in, a, in my book, um, suave. S stands for say the name. So you meet somebody and you repeat their name back to them. You know, and, and so uh, Tony is wonderful to see you. Uh, Marissa, great to meet you. You repeat it, just so you get to hear it twice. Once okay. from them, once from you. Uh, the you in suave is you use the name. Mm -hmm. um, now you use it three or four times in the context of the conversation, but you don't want to abuse it. You don't want to use it every single sentence, right? That would be an abuse. The A is a wonderful technique. A is ask. Everyone's favorite subject is themselves, right? <laughs> and you could ask about a person's name. You know, what's the origin? How do you? Uh, how do you? How do you? How do you spell it? Like, I'm, I'm curious with, with yeah. your name. Like, so it's uh, it, my full name's Mariam, and it's from Afghanistan originally. Okay. But Maz is uh, a bit of a nickname for the radio. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so you could ask people questions like the origin. Does it does it mean something in another mm -hmm. language? How do you spell it? Were you named after somebody? You know, those kind of things. Right. So you ask about those those things, and all of a sudden you have more connections to that person and to that name. And then finally, the V and the E in Swab. The V stands for visualize. Mm -hmm. And so what that is is we tend to remember things we see, right? We remember faces, we forget yes. the name, right? You go to someone and say, I remember your face, but I forgot your name. You never go to someone and say the opposite. You never mm -hmm. go to someone and say, I remember your name, but I forgot your face. face. That, yeah. that would make any sense. <laughs> but we tend to remember what we see because we have a, a larger vi visual cortex. Um, and so try seeing what you want to remember. So if a person's name, let's say, is, is Mike, imagine for a split second in your mind, they're singing karaoke on a microphone. And it sounds silly and childish, but children are the fastest learners, and they use their imagination and creativity to remember things. Yeah. Uh, you know, if a person's name is Mary, imagine they're getting married, right? Okay. And so, you know, a person's name happens to be Mark, put a check mark on their forehead in your mind, right? And though that little thing, it overcomes what I call the six second syndrome. When somebody tells you their name, you have six seconds to do something with it. Otherwise, it's it's gone, it's gone, right? And at right. least this helps you to focus on the person and also, you know, what you just heard their name. Fascinating. I need yeah. to and definitely. And, do and that. then the E in suave after V visualize is end. Always end the conversation saying okay. their name, you know, because if you can walk into a room of strangers and meet ten or fifteen or maybe twenty people and leave saying goodbye to every single one of them by name, ending with the name, who are they all going to remember? They're they're all going to remember you, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm, I need to use that technique. Um, so Jim, I'm reading your book, Limitless, at the moment. Absolutely love it, honestly. And obviously, there, you have worked with pretty much everybody. Like every right. celebrity under the sun is, uh, is in here. And you've worked with everyone from like Fortune 500 CEOs, Hollywood celebrities, companies like SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Nike, Google, Facebook. What like what is the conversation that happens at these yeah. huge companies? Like what are you teaching them? It's the same thing that what I think all of us are dealing with, regardless of our age or stage of life, you know, and the roles that we play. All of us want to master our mind, right? Yes. All of us want to kind of uh, reduce that negative self-talk. All of us want to be able to read faster. Want to be able to remember uh, facts, figures, foreign languages easier. Mm -hmm. um, in Hollywood, for example, I help uh, those actors and, uh, and studio executives speed read scripts. Uh, I help actors uh, memorize their lines. Yes. Uh, you know, because they could have dozens of pages of, of lines that they need to uh, rehearse and retain. Um, you know, athletes will help them memorize playbooks or increase their focus, their reaction time, uh, their ability to think quicker on, on their feet. Um, so we all have some aspect. I mean, it always comes back, I believe we live in the millennium of the mind, mm -hmm. that it's not like it was 100 years ago. None of your listeners are paid solely for their brute strength. You know, it, it, they're paid for their brain strength. Yeah. It's not, today it's not your muscle power, today it's your mind power. And the faster you can learn, the faster you can earn whether it's an individual or a team or a big organization or our nation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, or, or as a globe. Because today, knowledge is not only power, today knowledge is profit, yeah. right? Um, and it's the separation, it's not just the haves and have not, it's those who know things and those who don't know things. And those who know things can make better decisions, you know, for, you know, for themselves, for their families, and, you yeah. know, and, and moving forward. So I would say focus is a big issue for everybody. Right, um, we often get distracted. Overload uh, mm -hmm. is a big challenge uh, for a lot of people. The aging brain is a challenge for, for a lot of us. I, I lost my, my grandmother to Alzheimer's. I, I grew up with very severe learning challenges. People are surprised to hear that. I had a traumatic brain injury 
when I was five years old, okay. and um, and I couldn't process information. Teachers would repeat themselves over and over again. I had poor focus, poor memory. It took me four, three, four years to learn how to read, wow. different than the other kids. When I was nine years old, I was slowing down the class, and a teacher pointed to me and said, "That's the boy with the broken brain." And so that became more of my identity and my self-talk. Just like when people come to me and they say, oh, Jim, I have a horrible memory. Jim, I'm too old. I'm not smart enough. I say, stop. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. If you fight for your limits, they're yours, right? Your brain is this incredible supercomputer, and your self-talk is the program it will run. So if you tell yourself, I'm not good at remembering people's names, you will not remember the name of the next person you meet because you program your supercomputer not to. So your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, I think we all need people to encourage us, to challenge us, to cheerlead for us. Um, and if you haven't found that person yet, I would say be that person for someone else. Yeah. Especially be that person for you. What are some tips on how to have more positive thinking to improve your brain? Yeah, I believe all behavior is belief-driven. You know, as I was talking about, it's the, the, our self-talk is the program our our brain will run all the time. Um, something simple, I just did a podcast on this. Uh, I, I like magic, and for me, if you've ever seen a magician do their act, they never tell you how they do it, right? Mm -hmm. But I've learned that there's always a method behind what looks like magic. Even with myself, where I read a book a day, or uh, you know, remember people's names, or these, these mental feats, there's, I, I like to pull back the curtain to show people how to actually do that for themselves yeah. so they can advance their learning and advance um, you know, their life also, also mm -hmm. as well. I would say uh, in magic, they have this phrase abracadabra. And so if you just look at the acronym ABRA, A-B-R-A, -A, the A, so let's say you have a negative thought, right? The A is automatically you acknowledge it. Like, I don't try to fight it because I fight it. It's like telling you, your brain doesn't process negatives. You can't say, don't think of a, a big purple giraffe. Don't think, whatever you do, do don't not think. think of a big purple giraffe, right? We're going to think about it. And so if you say, don't think about this stuff, you're just going to think about it more. So I would say, acknowledge it, because what you resist persists. It'll just get deeper. Right. Um, the B, so that's A, is acknowledge. The B is breathe. You know, we know the power of breath. You've mm -hmm. had conversations on your show about yeah. this. Um, it's a, a wonderful way to be able to bridge your, your conscious, your, your, your non-conscious, uh, your um, automatic, your autonomous uh, nervous system. And so I would say, I would breathe into where you think that belief is, that thought is. So, you know, breathe, you could visualize it. The R is release. So when I breathe in, I'll breathe into it, something, and then I'll release that thought out. And then the A in Abra, the last A is align. And what I mean by that is add a new thought, or maybe, and usually it's the opposite of what you were just thinking. You know, maybe you were just thinking like, um, I'm, I'm not smart enough. And for me, like what I would do is add a little word like yet at the end. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I can't do this yet. Or I'm not smart enough yet. You know, even adding a yet, a three little you know, letter word changes everything. Even things like our self-talk is like, oh, I got to pick up the kids. I got to work out today. Yeah. I, I got to meditate. Even if you change the word got and then change that O and got to E, get, I get to pick up my kids today. I get to meditate today. I get to exercise and work out, eat the best foods ever. Mm -hmm. It changes your feeling and the emotion behind the, the spirit of, of what we're saying to ourselves. Marissa Peer says this a lot as well. She says self-talk self -talk is so important, even for example, to the degree that women with fertility, when they say, you know, it's, it's you know, your self-talk affects fertility. If you say, oh, I, yeah. you know, growing up, you say negative things about being pregnant or having a child, she says it affects you later on when you do actually want to fall pregnant and have a child. Mm -hmm. Our minds are always eavesdropping on our self-talk. It's always yeah. listening. If people truly understood how powerful their minds are, they wouldn't say or think something they didn't want to be true. And that's not to say you have one negative thought and it ruins your life any more than eating that one donut will ruin your life, but it's the consistency of it. If you do that every single day, multiple times a day, it really adds up. And so nobody is positive like all the time. And I don't think it's useful to be positive all the time. Yeah. But I'm saying be conscious that we have these thoughts. And that's why we do things like we meditate. Yeah. Right? You don't meditate to control your thoughts. You meditate so you realize that your thoughts don't control you. Right? That there's a space in, in between and there's a level of agency. And then mm -hmm. sometimes our thoughts are just these clouds in the wind that just kind of pass by. And so we are not our thoughts. 
How important is exercise for the brain? Incredibly. And I don't just mean like three times a week doing Pilates or CrossFit. Movement and the brain, the primary reason we have a brain is to control our movement. That's the number one reason why, why we have a brain, mm -hmm. or any creature has that brain, to be able to control their movement. And I, I always say, as your body moves, your brain grooves. The challenge is we're sedentary. We're sitting behind screens, a lot of us, all the time. And so I'm saying, how much are we moving throughout the day? You know, I, I always think that people should work within like 30, 45 minutes, you know, th which is really our ability to concentrate and do some deep work, and then take a brain break. And like a, even a five or 10 minute brain break to do three things. Number one, deep breathing. A lot of mental fatigue or brain fog comes from not getting enough oxygen. And a lot of people when they're reading, they get tired because their posture, they're slumped over and the lower one third of your lungs actually absorbs two thirds of the oxygen. Mm -hmm. And so do some deep breathing during that break. Hydrate. You know, I mentioned that if you're dehydrated, you're not, your reaction time, thinking speed, all, everything slows down because yeah. your brain is mostly water. And so you need to be able to, what you nourish flourishes, right? And then move, going back to power of movement. As your body moves, your brain grooves. When you move, you create brain-derived neurotropic factors. Fancy phrase is BDNF. And what is it? It's fertilizer for your brain. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important to be able to move. Even, and you, you know, even when I'm doing calls, I'll time chunk, you know, certain like calls when I'm walking, and I'll walk my dog, and I'll do that. You know, I'll try to stack certain things together. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you move, you come up with your best ideas also as well. You, yeah. you notice that, or you're on a treadmill, or you're on a bicycle, or an elliptical. If you're, even if you listen to your podcast or my show or my audiobook or something like that, and or your your, your book like, and you're somebody's on a some, doing something rhythmic, they'll actually understand that information and retain it better also as well. Mm -hmm. So exercise is so important. And I, again, I don't mean just, just three times a week, I mean throughout the day. Um, and that's why it's important. You know, here, they have big initiatives on getting your steps in yeah. and doing the things. That, that's how you move forward a body you know, or, or, or a world. I'm interested to hear, how, how about music? How important is music for your brain? It's it's a needle mover for a lot of people. You know, I think everyone should score their life. We all have a certain um, like think about when it talks about your brain and memory. We all have a song we could hear. It could take us back to when we were a teenager, right? Or a fragrance or food that could take us back to when we were a child. Mm -hmm. Information by itself is forgettable, but information was tied with emotions become unforgettable. Right, and so I think music is wonderful because first of all, it changes your mood. It, it can help reduce stress. A lot of people mm -hmm. feel uh, burnt out. They feel a lot of anxiety. And I think we have to, like when you listen, I, I do a lot in Hollywood, right? I help well with uh, studios and actors, you know, but it, the, the scene doesn't have the same feeling if it didn't have the same score, right? And there's certain things if you're watching, you know, certain movies and they're playing like something, um, that orchestra is playing behind it, it, it motivates you, right? And so I think we could have a soundtrack to our learning, a soundtrack to our life. Uh, certain people like to listen to music when they're working out. Mm -hmm. And some people like to do it first thing in the morning to get their mind straight, get their mood in the right place. I think it's wonderful to, to dance around and move your body, listen to music to change how we feel. Like if we're under stress or we're, we're, we're in, a, in a kind of certain stuck emotional state. Um, and also there's certain music that's really great for the brain. Right? There's uh, binaural beats that people find online, you know, on various YouTubes and so on. Um, there's a, I, I, I'm a fan of this device called Nucalm, N-U-C-A-L-M, uh, which is, uh, they have, you know, music for focus, you know, music to ignite, uh, you know, music to be able to, to rest and relax and to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, there's certain Baroque classical music that actually helps enhance learning. So classical music, is it's about 60 beats per minute, which harmonizes with the human heart uh, beat and rate, uh, which puts you in a relaxed state. So maybe you can learn languages and facts uh, mm -hmm. you know, more quickly. So music is, is a wonderful tool for people who are, who are inclined. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Um, and what about negative music? Like if, if it's a sad song or has negative uh, lyrics? Yeah, I mean, I think sadness, first of all, I would say sadness, I think, I think emotions are signposts. You know, I really think that if we feel things like fear, for instance, it's a sign that says, oh, we have to take some kind of action, you know, and so um, maybe it's, a, you know, I need to prepare better. I did a, a podcast interview where I had on my show a guest named Susan Cain, who's very noted. Uh, she has one of the top TED Talks ever, ever watched. And her work um, 
primary work was on introverts and the power of introverts. She wrote a book, a uh, best-selling book called Quiet mm -hmm. around it. Um, she has new research uh, that we talked about on my show, talking about sadness and sorrow actually serves a purpose. That, that you know, when, when, we, when we, as maybe a rainy day or a sad melody, um, actually there's, there's reasons why we feel those contrasting emotions. And one of them might be because we, it gives us contrast to, you know, when we feel good. You know, also, also as well, or, or appreciation, or we find some kind of insight or resonance that we watch a movie and it's sad, but we watch it over and over again, um, and that's not something we necessarily want to feel bad about. Um, but I think that everything is going back to choice. Yeah. You know, you know, and, and our own ability to, to make. I, I love sad to, songs. <laughs> yeah, so many people do. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a happy sad thing. <laughs> I love that. Um, what about supplements? What supplements are you taking? Um, so I'm not an expert on this. I'm not a nutritionist or anything that ends with an is. So I would recommend everyone, obviously, that the, you know, consult the, your doctor. Right, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't diagnose or treat anything like that. Um, personally, for me, uh, when it comes to my brain, I think the omega threes are omega three is very important. Yeah, DHA because your brain's mostly fat. Yeah. Um, Creatine is great. A lot of people uh, think it associated to working out and, and for their muscle, but it's actually good studies showing that it's actually good for the good for the brain. But what I would recommend is everyone go to their functional medicine doctor, or health practitioner, and do do tests. Yeah. You know, do a nutrient profile because I don't believe there's a one pill. There's no magic memory pill. You know, there is a process for sure. And so microbiome test also as well, because you know, there is this obviously, they say your gut is your second brain. There's mm -hmm. obviously a connection between the two. And, uh, but some people, even when it comes, I like to get most of my uh, nutrients through food, yeah. but in today's world, it's very hard to do, especially when you're busy or you're mm -hmm. traveling. Um, and so I would say you can do a microbiome test because there's certain foods that might be causing us uh, Ill, Ill effects. And we don't know, and maybe it's like even the brain foods I mentioned. You know, some of them people might not resonate with with blueberries for some reason. They might have some kind of allergy or something. So yeah. I think we're all bio individual. But if you're lacking, you know, I teach people the software. We have the largest academy in the world on accelerated learning, speed reading, memory enhancement, focus. But also you have to take care of the hardware because that's the mm -hmm. software program. But the hardware is if your brain is deficient in certain um, essential fatty acids, in um, vitamin D, in vitamin B, you know, your B vitamins, your brain's not gonna be in a place where it could be optimal, learn, and, and live. What about depression and the brain? Does exercise cure depression? Mm -hmm. So exercise has been shown, see, we're not logical as much as we are uh, biological. I, I can't talk intelligently on, on depression, you know, for the same reasons. But I would say exercise has a wonderful way of lifting our mood, just like listening to certain music does and certain foods. Uh, could also help be able to, as I mentioned, help reduce stress, actually, and, and, and reduce anxiety. Um, I would say it's um, movement is wonderful because you, you, when when we are not logical, we are biological. Think about dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins that you get from working out. Um, this runner high, if you will. And my thing is always thinking about how I'm gonna feel afterwards. I don't necessarily love doing the things I do on a regular, like cold showers, right? And, and certain, certain you know, uh, exercises, but you create this hormetic stress, just like certain foods, where the idea here is whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Yeah. And our body adapts because the human nervous system and, you know, we, we adapt so well to, to our environment. And so we grow stronger because of it. And so I would say that, great, move to change your mood. Um, that, that's very important. I also think, it, you know, mental health challenges, it's, it's an epidemic, right? Especially the past few years. Um, where we feel loneliness, or we're alone with our uh, thoughts, alone with our fears, or, you know, we might be feeling alone. Mm -hmm. That's why I think human connection is so very important. Yeah. Like learning, just like life, is not a solo journey, right? It's, it's social, and it's not just our neurological networks, or our biological networks, it's our social networks. Yeah. You know, it's who we spend time with, it's who we become. So if, if somebody right now is struggling right now, um, it's funny because Physical pain is often more, uh, not celebrated, but more noted than, than emotional or mental pain. You know, it's, it's easier to say like, um, oh, my knee hurts than it is to say my heart is broken, you know, or yeah. I feel alone. 
and uh, and mental and emotional pain often is 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 more hurtful, you know, and sometimes even more detrimental. Um, and so I would say, if you're struggling right now, it's asking for help is a sign of strength, right? Ask for help because nobody is an island. We all go through hard times. That's why kindness is a superpower. We never know when we're walking, you know, down the streets, if we pass somebody and they're they're fighting the battle of their lives, yeah. you know. And so I would say part of it is self care. Um, and it's not easy. I'm not saying any of this is easy, but I'm saying it's worth it, that they're worth it, you mm -hmm. know? And part of self-care is not just eating the best brain foods and, and getting sleep. Certainly that could only help, but I would say part of self-care is self-love. Like looking in the mirror and falling in love with that person that's looking back at you, you know, that's been through a whole lot and is, and is still standing. Yeah. You know, and, and recognizing and acknowledging how far, you know, we've come mm -hmm. and that we don't have to do it alone. So, you know, whoever's going through this right now, my heart goes out to you. And I would say you inspire people with your grit, you know, and your grace. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, Jim, what are the top three steps or habits right now that anyone can take to improve mm -hmm. their brain performance? Yeah, so I'd say I got this from uh, a peer of mine, Dr. Daniel Amen, who's written a lot of books. He's a you know a brain doctor. Mm -hmm. He says, um, get used to asking the question: Is this good for my brain or is this bad for my brain? So just like, is this good for my brain or is this bad for my brain? Just get used, put that on a post-it note, put it as an alarm on your phone. But just train yourself, start asking that question more, and that alone, um, you know, will make you appreciate your brain more because it's it's like if somebody was at driving age and they were given a car. And absolutely free and clear, but that's the car you had for the rest of your life. How well would you treat that car if you had to use this car for decades? Yeah. Well, we're given this vehicle of a body, you know, and the steering thing is our is our brain. And I believe you have to be the pilot of your of your brain, not the, just the passenger, right? Yeah. And so make those choices of what who to spend time with, and what you're going to eat, and what you're going to consume and watch. Um, the second thing I would say is get the sleep right. Absolutely, we don't prioritize sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we glorify busy, you know, being busy, like it's a badge of honor because if we're yeah. busy, we must be important. Um, but I would say, you know, set an alarm, not only to wake up, but to go to sleep. That's probably more important, the alarm to go to sleep because your brain loves to, to stay on a cycle um, and consistency, even, you know, on days that you don't have to work and still go to bed at the same time, mm -hmm. you know. And I remember the things I mentioned, like, you know, when things are more cold or it's darker, you sleep better also as well. Um, so get your sleep right. And then the third thing I would say is exercise you know, and so is this good for my brain or bad for my brain? Optimize your sleep. And, and then the second thing I would say, exercise your mind and body every day. There's not a day that goes by, you know, I did that Insta story with Will Smith and I was like, you know, we we're in his trailer. I was like, what are two things you do to just be a good performer? And he was prepping for a movie and he's like, I do two things, I run and I read. You know, and I really think, you know, running, as I mentioned, that you know, that good cardio is good for your heart, it's gonna be good for your head, blood flow and oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, reading is like, reading is to the mind what exercises to your body. Yeah. And I think reading is one of the best things that we could do. The leaders are readers. If you've seen pictures of me on social media with Oprah, with Elon, with these men, we bonded over learnings. So we bonded over our favorite books. If somebody has decades of experience and they put it into a book, and you can sit down and read that book in a few days, you could download decades in a days, and that's the biggest advantage. So, you know, reading, and again, I, I, put, this, I put this link in, in our Instagram for that masterclass on speed reading, because that's mm -hmm. like the difference between walking and really doing that zone to cardio workout. So, you know, exercise your body and, and your brain. And is Audible the same? I listen to a lot of audio books. Yeah. Is that the same sort of effect? Or? I, I love our auto, Audible book. We, yeah. we put at the end of every chapter conversations talking about that, you know, like, um, and so I, I think it's a wonderful way to learn. When people are tested, okay, so I listen to podcasts, I listen to audiobooks. Um, when people are tested for comprehension, reading something and listening to it, uh, generally, um, some say show that um, people have better comprehension and retention when they read something. Okay. But that's usually because when people are listening to audio, they're usually doing something else, mm -hmm. right? So they're cleaning the house or they're driving. Right, so the focus of attention is elsewhere, so they're not, you know, getting. But I, I love listening to audios. It's one of the best ways to learn. Um, I, like a lot of people, listen to it at faster speeds. 
you know, just we teach people how to read three times faster in our academic courses mm -hmm. um, and our tr professional development training. So we know we could understand information. We just can't speak that fast. Yeah. And so we, we train people how to, how to listen and, and to learn faster. And what about coffee? I'm really interested. You hear so many different things about coffee. Is coffee good for the brain or not? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I, 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 I don't um, drink much coffee, but I was okay. never a, a coffee drinker. I was more okay. in my household. We drank more tea, you know. But but caffeine has is probably the the most widely used uh, nootropic mm -hmm. in terms of helping people uh, have energy, helping them uh, to get alertness and, and focus. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, though, I, I don't I can't do it every day. I feel like. Uh, my physiology and everyone's different gets accustomed to anything and so it's like certain supplements i don't take every single day either because i do some days on some days off to keep the effect i never want my body to get too used Reliant, to to something yeah. and dependent on something okay. you know for me i for me i like tea for me something that's stimulating is like an ice bath first thing in the morning mm -hmm. where you know that coffee I, I can't get the same kind of benefits from it where i just feel like i go into an ice bath for two three minutes and check your you know your practitioner and do it safely um, but i get out of it and i'm just like for the next few hours i am just on you know so that's where i go for my alertness and my my energy right i do cryo as well and yeah. uh I feel alive when I come out of the cryo. I mean. it, it's like I, I encourage everybody not to start with like something like cryo or an <laughs> ice bath um, because that can be pretty, uh, that's a big jump yeah. if first someone's never done it. But maybe even like 10 seconds of a cold shower and then 20 seconds warm and just switching back and forth. It helps the lower inflammation, mm -hmm. uh, which could cause a lot of challenges. And it's just, a, for me, it's a reset of my nervous system. I just feel alive. And then the other thing is, Training yourself to do hard things, I think, is very important in life. Because if you can't, if you just do the easy things in life, which is binge watching everything and procrastinating, putting things off, life gets hard long term. But if you do the hard things in life, life gets a lot easier. You know, and I think discipline is cultivated through challenge. And when we challenge ourselves, that's where change comes from. So if you get yourself to do something difficult, like take a cold shower, yeah. you, how you do anything is how you do everything. So you're taking that same mentality and an attitude of grit and persistence and res resilience into a difficult conversation you have to have later at work. Yeah. You know, when you have to be in an uncomfortable situation, you're training yourself you know, um, to, to thrive in uncomfortable situations. Do you think you can, this might be a silly question, but do you think you can train your brain to make a particular amount of money, for example, like with manifestation or law of attraction, if you say, I want to make this amount of money or I want to, this particular job, or I want to do this, do you think you can sort of manifest that or do you think, no? So I think um, even if you look at like law of attraction, there's the word in, in, the, in the word attraction is the word action. And I think things have to go from your head to your heart to your hands. That I could think all day in my head um, and set goals or KPIs or envision things in my head. But if I'm not acting consistently with my hands, I feel like what's missing usually is the emotion, which is the heart. And so I think when all three are aligned, yeah. you know, in my book, I have, I have a framework for becoming limitless, which is based on unlimiting your mindset, the beliefs you currently have about something, including yourself. So, you know, some people, their mindset is, I don't deserve this. I'm not capable of it. This is not possible. So part of it is a mindset issue, but you can unlimit your mindset and believe it's possible, you're capable, you deserve it. But also the second M is motivation. So if people feel stuck in a box and they're not making progress and they want to attract or create something new in their life, the three parts of that box, three dimensional, the first is your mindset, that will keep you in the box. I don't deserve it, I'm not capable, it's not possible, I'm not possible. Or you might unlimit that through some of the things we teach in the book and you're not motivated. So the second is motivation. You need motivation to get out of that box. Right, because uh, you could believe it, it's all possible, but you're not motivated to do anything about it. And so I talk about my formulas for motivation and overcoming procrastination. But then you could have a limitless mindset and limitless motivation, but you need a third M, which are the methods. Mm -hmm. And I really think, you know, some people are using old methods for making money. They're using old methods of marketing. They're using old methods for reading. They're old methods for learning, old methods mm -hmm. for memorizing something. Yeah. And so it's not a, 
most people are downgrading their dreams to meet the this current situation, and I, 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 I think that's a mistake. We shouldn't be downgrading our dreams to meet you know today's situation. We should be upgrading our mindset, upgrading our motivation, upgrade the methods we're using to be able to meet our, our dreams and our, our destiny. Jim, tell us a little bit about, I mean, we've gone over a lot of things, but yeah. tell me um, about your book, Limitless. So Limitless is the owner's manual for the brain. Um, we're very proud of this book. Um, it was an instant New York Times bestseller, number one on the Wall Street Journal. It's, it swept all the categories. And I would say that if you ever struggle with distraction or overload or memory loss, uh, your own identity, negative belief systems, this is an owner's manual for your number one wealth building asset that you own, which is your brain. You know, people upgrade their phones, they upgrade their apps, they upgrade their computer or software. Uh, their clothing. But when's the last time we upgraded the, the most important technology, which is the human mind? Mm -hmm. So it's an owner's manual for your brain. It uh, teaches through story um, and takes you, makes you the hero of the journey. It helps you to improve your focus. It'll help you to read better. It'll help you to remember languages, facts, mm -hmm. figures, uh, and so much more. It talks about unlocking what I call your exceptional life and how to use a limitless model of mindset, motivation, and methods mm -hmm. uh, to really, most people, they're shrinking everything of what's po they're shrinking what's possible to fit their minds when they should be expanding their minds to fit all that's possible Love and that. that that's the book i wrote it's it's people don't have to spend a fortune like i did learning everything that i did they don't have to spend three decades like i did doing what i did i put it all in one book um so you can sit down and read it you know in a handful of days and you know i really i, I appreciate your show I was, I was listening uh to a couple episodes you know, I think what the world needs now is real hope and real help. You know, the, who's having conversations with people, you know, now about, you know, encouraging them, about unlocking their true greatness and genius. And I think that's the way. So many people dim their light because it's shining in somebody else's eyes. Yeah. But I think we have to right now, if anything, shine, shine brighter and inspire those around us to do the same. You know, I, I think there's a version of all your listeners, you know, regardless of where they are in, in their life, um, there's a version of yourself you haven't met yet. And the goal is we show up every single day until, until we're introduced. So, yeah, and we, we donated 100% of the proceeds, all the proceeds to charity. Wow. Um, Alzheimer's Research for Women in memory of my grandmother. We built schools around the world, Ghana, Guatemala, Kenya, fully funded the schools for girls and, and boys who needed education, provided health care, clean water. I believe you learn so you can earn, so you can could, you could return. You know, and I think that's that's the hero's journey. So incredibly inspiring. Thank you so much, Jim. It's been such an absolute pleasure. Go and get Limit Limitless. Go and follow Jim Quick on all social media. It's been such an absolute pleasure. So inspiring. Thank, Thank you, you so much.